Hi guys, we're going to look over calculating the edge length of a unit cell. So we left off talking a lot about unit cells. We talked about how to calculate the number of atoms in them. Um, and we also talked about kind of different types. So if you change the A versus the different angles versus um, B or C, etc. So now we're going to talk about kind of going backwards. If you know specific information about the unit cell, for instance, maybe that it is body-centered cubic, remember BCC from our lab, and something about the density of it, then maybe we can go back and calculate the edge length. So far we've been doing it where we're given the length or we're given the atomic radii, and then we can calculate the volume of a unit cell. Now we're going to go from kind of a macro scale and figure out the edge length from there. Okay, so a um, little bit of a different thinking, and this will help with the last question on your sapling assignment um, for chapter 11. So uh, to calculate the edge length, we can solve problems that look like this. So titanium, which is Ti, is body-centered cubic and has a density of 4.43 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, so grams per centimeter cubed, centimeter cubed, meaning our length times our width times our height, um, and it, we want to calculate the edge length of one unit cell. Okay, so if we're visualizing a body-centered cubic unit cell, then it looks like this. I even drew it with my fancy uh, silver sharpie so that it looks like titanium. So fancy. So we have atoms on each of the corners like this, and then we have one at the body center. Okay, so this is our titanium unit cell. And what we're trying to solve for is the length of one edge. So we want to know this distance right here, which is going to be the same as this one and the same as this one. So if we're doing this in kind of our, here's our X, here's our Y, here's our Z, then this would be my A, right? And this would be my B, and then this would be my C. Okay, so that's X, Y, Z. And we know that because it's cubic, all of the angles are going to be equal to uh, 90 degrees. So my alpha is equal to my beta is equal to my gamma is equal to 90 degrees. And then my A is going to be equal to my B is equal to my C because it's cubic. And that's what we're solving for. We're solving for one of those variables on this particular unit cell. Okay, so this is kind of the visual that we're working with, and hopefully it helped to have the, the models last week during lab. Now the key to this is to go from density, so you're given this density in grams per centimeters cubed. Well, we'll have more information about the edge of these things if we know how many atoms there are per centimeter cubed. So our first step here is to go from density to number of atoms per cubic centimeter. And anytime we're going to figure out the number of atoms of something, then you know we're going to use what? Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if we need to use Avogadro's number, that means we need to go from grams to moles first. So if we're given this many 4.43 grams per one centimeter cubed, and we'll just keep the per centimeter cubed, that's fine. Then we go from grams of titanium to moles of titanium. So if I go to my periodic table and I look up my molar mass of titanium, then I find in one mole there is 47.87 grams. And then I can go from moles of titanium to atoms of titanium using Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of titanium. Okay. So when you plug and chug through that, and I think it's important to kind of understand what you're doing step by step, then you get 5.57 times 10 to the 22nd atoms per cubic centimeter. Okay. Uh, atoms 
Now, this is a pretty big number, right? Something on the order of 10 to the 22nd is quite large, but we are talking about a number of atoms, so this is expected to be a large number. Anytime you're multiplying by Avogadro's number, we would expect that the answer would be large. Now from this, we need to use the other piece of information we're given in the question, which is that it's body-centered cubic. So we need to figure out how many atoms there are per unit cell. So if we break out our unit cell here, we know that there are eight atoms on the corners, and each atom is how much of an atom, really? If we're just talking about this unit cell, how much of this atom is in this unit cell? And you should be thinking to yourself, it's on the corner, it's an eighth, right? It's shared by eight unit cells. So I have eight of these guys times my one eighth, and that gives me one atom, and that's coming from the corners. Now I also have one atom that's in the body center. Remember that the body center atom is not shared with anything else. So we have one at the body center. It's basically times one over one, right? Because we're not sharing. There's no fraction of anything. So that also gives me one atom of titanium. So in this unit cell, I have two atoms per unit cell. So that's gonna be the next conversion that's important. Two atoms per unit cell. Okay, so if I know how many atoms I have per centimeter cubed, now using this information, I can figure out how many unit cells I have per centimeter cubed. Okay, and that's gonna be my next step. So I have 5.57 times 10 to the 22nd atoms per centimeter cubed. And we're gonna multiply that by two atoms per unit cell. I'm gonna um, abbreviate UC, unit cell, not University of California. And then I'm basically just cutting this in half then. So now I have this many unit cells, 2.79 times 10 to the 22nd. That's the number of unit cells I have per centimeter cubed. Okay. All right, now here's kind of the tricky bit. I'm trying to get to an edge length, right? I'm trying to figure out how long the edge is for this unit cell. Right now I have the number of unit cells per centimeter cubed, but I need to figure out the volume of this unit cell. So that's the number of centimeters cubed per unit cell, right? So I need to flip this thing. So if I take the inverse of this number, then that will give me what I'm looking for. That will give me the volume of one unit cell. So if I just flip this thing over, I take one divided by this number, then I end up with 3.58 times 10 to the negative 23rd centimeters cubed per unit cell. Okay, so that's kind of slick. It's a little bit tricky, because now we know that this is my volume per one unit cell. So all I had to do is take the inverse. Now this number is really tiny. Right? It went from a number that's really large, this many unit cells per centimeter cubed. When I flipped it, now it's a really small number. Again, this is what we would expect. We would expect it to be a small number when we're talking about the volume of just one individual unit cell. Okay, is everyone with me on that? So just to get a centimeter, just to get one of these legs, right? In order to find the volume of the unit cell, it'd be A times B times C, which would give me an answer in centimeters cubed. So to just find one of these, all I have to do is take the cube root of this answer. And then that gives me 3.30 times 10 to the minus eighth centimeters. And then depending on what units it wants it in, then you could do it to something else. This is a really small number in terms of centimeters, but if I was to convert to something like nanometers or something, then that would be a larger number. So depending on what they're asking for or angstroms, 
then you can get that information from there. But this is at least in centimeters and you know that you can use your dimensional analysis to get to different units should you need to. Okay, so that's all I had for this particular problem. This kind of rounds out our discussion on solids. And if you have any questions on this, then don't hesitate to ask and I'll talk to you again soon.